Ele He received his PhD in engineering studies. He has over 15 years of involvement in research in structure, counseling, and down to earth application improvement. His exploration skill covers image processing, cooperative networks, electromagnetic fields, electronic devices, wireless networks, and medical uh, electronics. Uh, at the present, Dr. Anand is a member of uh, over 130 professional bodies over the globe. He is a uh, biographical world record holder of Marquis Who is Who in the World, uh, 32nd, 33rd, and 34th editions, uh, for his exceptional commitment towards exploring the group from 2015 to 2017. He has conveyed guest lectures in reputed in engineering colleges and reputed industries on different themes. And he has uh, received awards for uh, papers, uh, which has been considered the best uh, papers in different uh, different fields and different domains. Uh, Dr. Anand, thank you again for joining us today, and the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor, for your uh, wonderful words and your, you know, a very lengthy description uh, about uh, uh, me uh, with regards to this uh, webinar. Uh, yes. Uh, just give me some uh, one minute uh, while I fix my camera. Okay, doctor. Take your time. Okay. Uh, is my screen visible to you? Yes, doctor, it is visible. So, very good day to everybody present here. So, welcome you all for the uh, one day uh, international webinar on importance of uh, in information security in the digital age. This is especially for the staff members and young researchers who have been actively participating in teaching and research in and around the globe. And this is Dr. Christo Anand for you. Uh, you can reach me at my mail id dr.christoanand at the rate of gmail.com. So this is a sh short nutshell uh, presentation of my CV. I have like 12 years of teaching and research experience in uh, reputed uh, engineering colleges and universities. <coughs> I served as an assistant professor in France Civil Engineering College of India, then went on to do my PhD, then served as an associate professor in AMA International University Bahrain, right now serving as a professor in St. Malteresa Engineering College, India. So first of all, before beginning this presentation, first of all, let me thank God for giving me this golden opportunity to deliver this useful webinar to share my knowledge among my fellow national and international participants. So thank you, dear God. A tribute to our officials, director of this university, vice rector for international relations, vice rector for development, vice rector for uh, academic affairs, vice rector for research, vice rector for general affairs, vice rector for social and humanitarian affairs, vice rector for education and research in English. Tribute to our officials once again, Professor Adila Asadova, Head Azerbaijani Language and Literature, Professor Parvis Gubanov, Head Financial Accounting, Professor Parvana Aliyeva, Head Design Department, Professor Naila Guleva, Dean of School of Higher Technologies and Innovative Engineering, Professor Hossein Dolo Bagiru, Head Political Science and International Relations, the Head of the Department of Natural Sciences, Professor Afrin Abasova, Head Psychology and Sociology, Pro Professor Dahira Aliyeva, Head English and Translation Department, Professor Rana Hajiyeva, Head Information Technologies, Professor Aga Miralam, Head Law Department, Professor Firuz Kobanov, Head 
Tourism and Sectoral Economics, Professor Ilham Salimo, Head of Mathematics and Physics Department, Professor Nurlan Nazirov, Head of the History Department, Professor Elmer Badalov, who is my friend and my well-wisher, Head of International Relations, Professor Dodana Rastamova, Head Mechanical Devices and Machines, Professor Minavar Abduleva, Head Philosophy Department, and Re uh, Professor Rehan Hosenova, Vice President of Azerbaijan France Friendship Society. So, thank you, my dear officials and uh, the head of the department who always understood the need to initiate a fruitful outcome on teaching, learning, and education. So, thank you, my dear officials. And thank you, my dear colleagues and fellow participants who understood the necessity to support this useful uh, webinar by your valuable presence. Without you, the event would not have been possible. And this is what we are going to see at a glance. Because these are the topics which we are which we are going to go in depth. First of all, we go with a short introduction. Next, we go into protecting information in digital countries. Then we understand the necessity of effective information security in libraries, how we can maintain in them. And uh, I'm going to bring you a nutshell of uh, Information Security Awareness, ISA, in developing countries in the digital age. And uh, causes of cybercrime. Then we are going to go in depth with the factors which influence the Information Security Awareness, ISA. Then we are going to understand how cyber security can be taken as a career choice. Next, cyber security is changing our lives every now and then. Cyber crimes in developing countries, the most uh, common and the most famous one of them, ATM fraud. And I'm going to give you uh, some of my 2022 cyber security predictions, which are nothing but the end of uh, privacy laws, no more operating system to compromise, no more embedded password in IoT devices, future plans and policy recommendations, you go it by the Azerbaijani way, importance of technical events within the institution to achieve the mission and finally a video which explains the future of cyber security 2030. So this is a short introduction about uh, <coughs> the inf information technology what you have the cyber security. Of course we have been uh, enjoying a present digital era where uh, there is a need to actually uh, create information you are going to you know, collect the information, you are going to manage the digital information in database, you are going to collect and manipulate the digital information, you are going to store in memory devices and you are going to share this information regardless of the time and space. So uh, these uh, processes are regularly involved in the present digital era. So in this era you call the information to be a very very economic cost efficient source or maybe a key factor in the modern production so that uh, its uh, utilization is very important even for the individual for the uh, sole single human being or maybe for the organization success so information is very very important tool even for the individual or it can be for the organization or it for the society or it for the national or it for the local regional or international level information is power I remember a movie, uh, a movie where uh, uh, they have portrayed uh, information as a vital part, you know. Uh, for example, uh, to give you personal bank loans or maybe personal home loans, uh, these fraudsters, they try to get the information from you. Like for example, date of birth or maybe uh, uh, your, uh, your country uh, national ID card or maybe your address, your phone number, everything they try to... Uh, get intact and uh, with the national ID card which they have they get into the information they try to you know get the money or maybe they hack the money from your bank accounts through illegal access so naturally you can say that uh, information is far so you have to keep it very carefully so the importance of information cannot be over emphasized because it is cut across different profession, professions 
for example even with the colleges where you work for even with the university where you work for even maybe the company maybe the industry information security is of vital importance there is actually a difference between the advanced countries and the developing countries about the information awareness for example in the advanced countries you now people get access to the technologies but in you know, you know, developing countries still people are not used to the technologies or the awareness about information security or information technology is very less so that's the reason you call information as a vital part and protecting information in digital countries uh, you are going to discuss uh, the concept and in importance of information security in developing countries in the digital age but this is very important information security awareness because in developing countries this plays a vital role because it helps to identify the cyber crime in developing countries in the digital age so when you are going to identify the cyber crimes you have to actually go in touch with the challenges that is actually taking place and what are the solutions that can, that can be recommended in order to preserve this uh, information security in the forthcoming days and effective communic uh, information security or cyber security in the libraries normally the libraries uh, now people uh, try to get access uh, in touch with the information about the books or maybe journal articles or maybe conference articles they get in touch to but it is very important you know to you know preserve the information security because this is the easiest way where a hacker can get in touch with the uh, libraries so staff assigned to the information security task should be aware of the technologies or the smart tools that are available in the libraries and proper training of personnel is very important with uh, regards to issues and procedures whether it may be privacy or maybe authentication or physical security or maybe soft security as well the the personnel should be trained enough so as to maintain the digital information not only security procedures but you know the present and future physical security plans should be laid out well in advance for these measures and data integrity measures should be carried out periodically at least week wise so as to preserve the information security and there should be levels of access to data or equipment and monitoring for different types of access may it be a cct cam camera or maybe the uh, information security that we try to store in this uh, as a digital information you have to maintain top level priority for maintaining the security this is information security awareness in developing countries i am not going to deal much about the you know the advanced countries but uh, it is very important like a developing country uh, uh, like azerbaijan to really concentrate on the information security awareness because there is uh, a security threat in all the countries which should be adequately protected and uh, information security awareness generally focus more on the motivation of the employee in an organization so they have to follow some policies or maybe regulations or maybe procedures for information security so rightly it can be stated as an isa information security awareness it's a state where users are aware users in an organization are aware and are ideally committed to their security mission so security is very important privacy is very important authentication is very important with the case of uh, information security awareness and these are the causes of cyber crime because uh, uh, these are very important uh, cases uh, where we might not uh, 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 deal much importance to urbanization is one important factor of cyber crime unemployment or lack of knowledge lack of uh, communication technologies or lack of usage of smart tools is very very uh, important cause of cyber crime also greed you know inordinate quest for wealth like uh, uh, suppose if you want to earn money in short duration of time the easiest way is to hack somebody else uh, digital information and uh, threaten uh that particular person uh, for huge amount of money and weak implementation of cyber crime laws now very very important 
if you do, if you don't implement a very strong cyber crime laws chances that uh, your country might uh, be poor very soon and inadequately equipped law agencies there should be law agencies uh, uh, top priorities uh, law agencies which uh, should uh, actively uh, concentrate on cyber crime and these are the common factors which were influencing the information security awareness policy procedures regulations uh, well defined rules should uh, get in touch with the awareness education proper education it's not about completing phd alone but uh, with regards to security how well you are uh, in touch with the smart tools <coughs> that matters the most and then knowledge of technology you should know the technology well and you should be trained enough adequately so as to build an awareness and you should have a proper discipline proper behavior even if you are a trained personnel still you should have a behavior to handling the awareness so these are the common factors which influence the information security awareness cyber security is slowly uh, taking a career choice for many many young entrepreneurs and young uh, uh, student, students and scientists even uh, why we choose cyber security as a career choice because it has a limitless scope for growth you cannot say cyber security it is going to diminish within two or three years there is digital information there is cyber security you are going to get in touch with the cyber security more smart uh, tools are going to evolve definitely you are going to enjoy the way all around so it's a similar pattern the technologies and organizations are following collectively because it's a fast progressing field so say with regards to cyber security there are, there are endless numerous opportunities and challenges which can help one truly grow together and it's an impactful job whether you are doing as a sole person within a single room or maybe if you are doing it for an organization if you are a cyber security expert it's going to have a direct impact on your company its customers and employees because uh, it's very important to <coughs> finish the project on time but it's very important to preserve the digital information and uh, make sure that that your information is not known to your competition companies or industries or maybe organizations so it has a lot more gravitas to your profile definitely your cyber security expert profile will go into fetch huge amount of money i remember uh, a very latest news uh, where in amazon and even in instagram uh, it's a social platform uh, uh, a person uh, from european country has uh, uh, identified a bug uh, which uh, they have been taking many long years uh, to you know fix this bug and uh, he was awarded with a cash award of uh, 25000 uh, us dollars so even cyber security experts are having a very good uh, future with uh, regards to job or maybe the uh, the career which they are pursuing with and rewarding at various levels that's what i was uh, uh, talking about so when we talk of rewards we are not just going to focus on the package that you will draw but it also speaks of the learning that you will accumulate and the excitement it will entail because normally it's like uh, when i try to do research it's not that i try to uh, become sad out of the mistakes but uh, i really keep in mind that uh, you know i learn from mistakes and uh, i will be a better uh, person when i uh, encounter it next time so you should think as, as a process of learning rather than you know focusing more on the mistakes you cyber security is slowly changing our lives of course it is changing our lives every now and then it's a growth market so cyber security attacks are uh, increasing in frequency in terms of sophistication or maybe it's uh, uh, you know positive as well as negative impact uh, you know the parameters are uh, making uh, a direct impact on the cloud usage even even with the case of it and information security they need to uh, be correlated so that uh, we can have the least uh, uh, equal energy and innovation out of the resources that we try to consume and there has been frequent changes in the business practices because of the cyber security 
and uh, the opportunities which are presented by the digital and digitally enabled services they are creating you know uh, new risks because uh, every uh, now and then when we try to concentrate on the new technologies then definitely it will give rise to new risks so it's more and more technologies has to be ba balanced in order to counter these issues <coughs> So information security has become a requirement that goes uh, beyond the IT's ability to secure using technology. You can imagine the information uh, security as a uh, maybe an information park where uh, even the partner communities or maybe the executives or maybe the employees make the best use of it. And enterprises need to develop and implement business-based management and governance uh, strategies. So if you think it in an executive staff manner or maybe the board level, definitely for, uh, you know, even with the case of you know, flood management or maybe crisis management for national threat, even you can uh, use uh, cyber security in a positive impact. So this is all about uh, cyber crimes in developing countries. So email scam. So email scam, uh, actually we are... Uh, uh, this is uh, most common, most prevalent uh, nowadays. Like uh, we get a mail from somebody, okay. Like uh, okay, your email has won twenty-five thousand US dollars, okay. Uh, or maybe something like uh, okay, I, I have got some uh, private information of you. So if you are going to make a, a Bitcoin payment, then I will release all the information. So this is something like an email scam, where if you try to click on a link or maybe if you try to respond, definitely. Uh, you are going to be the trap out of it. So the targets are the individuals anywhere in the world. So these scammers solicit for financial assistance using the names of prominent pastors or maybe persons, institutions or organizations in the country. Very recently, uh, I received a message uh, from a, a, a doctorate, uh, like uh, a US project which uh, requires uh, uh, some amount of money. So uh, we shall work together, something like that it was mentioned. So they also use uh, JSM to send uh, de deceptive uh, text messages in order to lure the victims. And then cyber hacking, this has to do with unauthorized access to online accounts, computers or technologies such as websites or networks by manipulating a code to crack. This is a serious invasion of privacy. Hackers break into defaced websites in order to access their sensitive information. At other uh, times, they you know simulate such websites and uh, try to you know get the guise of a hack person. Like uh, for example, if you try to visit a website and uh, if you try to create an account and if you try to uh, you know remember password in it, so definitely it will gain access to another website where uh, it. Uh, uh, stores its in information and sometimes you might be getting you know a notification from the mobile okay like unwanted access uh, so on so what you can do you can block off all the notifications uh, you know remove all the uh, unauthorized apps out of your mobile so definitely you are going to save yourselves from cyber hacking this is cyber stalking so cyber stalkers, they use internet or maybe email or maybe electronic communication devices. So it's a form of threat or maybe harassment, you know, to uh, threaten their victims. And then computer vandalism, you know, act of removing important information from the computer system by an intruder, denying the owner of the right to access the information. Definitely, uh, this happens with the case of mobile banking apps because they try to gain unauthorized access out of it and they try to steal their passwords and they get their uh, things done, you know, create uh, you know, uh, create a duplicate SIM out of it and, you know, stop the uh, messages, the, the money withdrawal messages from your mobile, they stop it and they try to uh, get much as much money as possible. So this uh, commonly happens uh, nowadays when uh, people get access with your digital information. ATM fraud. So uh, this uh, this has been a top news headline every now and then. So it's an electronic cash dispensing machine for people to withdraw cash, purchase airtime, you know, transfer cash even. There's a rise in ATM fraud. Okay, like uh, for example, when a person tries to uh, the person, the training person, when he or try, uh, he or she tries to you know refill the money, like uh, unauthorized thieves, they gain access. Uh, they get in touch with the system digitally and uh, they try to uh, you know get uh, take the money as much as possible okay. 
So even the training personnel, even they get uh, unauthorized access and they try to do all the mischievous items. So the level of ATM fraud tend to have overshot the improvements which it has brought in the service delivery systems of the financial institutions. So here are my 2022 cyber security predictions. Uh, it might sound uh, awful but still maybe I am expecting this to happen. End of privacy loss. And now you might be thinking why there is end of privacy loss. Because uh, uh, even from the year 2017 to 2021, you know, citizens of all around the world, they what they did is they voted to discontinue all the privacy laws because there is no longer any information that is private. Instead, countries have moved, moved from laws that require non disclosure of private information to laws that require alternate factors or maybe validation before any private data is used. So, no one cares what is known about you, no one cares. And uh, it is now illegal to use this information in order to deny benefits or maybe employment or gain credit. So, so stronger security laws has to be in, uh, enforced. You know, uh, these security laws, every time you click on I agree, I agree, I agree, there is no need of privacy laws. We will have moved from a prevention model to one that is defensive and specific, you know, very specific, which will have a direct impact on your employment, direct impact on your career or maybe a direct impact on your benefits. Too. No more OS to compromise. Operating system or OS have gone away, and every laptop in the market is now running a emulator that functions as a startup program or em embedded firmware. So nothing can be infected more because uh, you know few key vendors they get to uh, in touch with each other to identify and analyze the trusted modules which are taking place in the future and present uh, technology tools in practice. So no more OSs to compromise. And no more embedded passwords in IoT devices. Uh, you know, internet outage has been, uh, you know, very adverse uh, even. There has been several multiple uh, botnet attacks even, all originating from the IoT devices. So, Institution of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, IEEE, will have developed some new standards for communication and encryption on these IoT devices and uh, they will have dynamically generated passwords that require physical access. So, you need not have to, you know, click on the bus, like, uh, okay, click on the moving vehicles, click on the trucks, no more, like, uh, it will be, uh, you know, digitally uh, generated, dynamically generated so that uh, it requires physical access even. For example, in YouTube, you have a two-level verification. For example, if you get in touch with an account, so in your mobile, you have some password which is displaying in your mobile. So if you enter the password, it gets uh, uh, digitally signed in. So every vendor has removed default passwords and people are now used to physically touch the most devices to display the password. So no more embedded passwords in IoT devices. Decrypted internet traffic makes uh, antivirus software irrelevant. So, if you speak about IoT, like uh, communication provi providers, uh, there are uh, denial of service attacks, dynamic denial of service attacks, which gain permission to begin decrypting the traffic for blocking attacks which do not match the industry standards. So, it uh, it is going to knock off all the non IEEE standard devices. It is going to cut the total uh, consumption of bandwidth by 90% on the internet. So, this uh, actually uh, makes uh, antivirus software uh, no sense at all. So, as viruses can no longer even traverse the internet without uh, being blocked. So, uh, only if there are viruses, there should be antivirus. If so, if there are no viruses even, so definitely we are not going to get in touch with the antivirus software. Oops. Terrorism and cyber terrorism form a bloody convergence. So as terrorism has morphed, we can see multiple occurrence of terrorists you know, cutting off the body parts of the victims and using them to gain access to the memory system. This has been very prevalent uh, with the you know, terrorist activities nowadays. So what it will do is it will morph the biometrics uh, uh, industry into requiring uh, factors like including body heat and electrical impulses. So if the body heat is let down or maybe the electrical impulses of skin are being let down, so it uh, gain, it, it blocks the uh, terrorists from gaining access into the uh, biometric system or the 
gain access to the computer system basically. And embedded technology into the human body automates multi-factor authentication. Like uh, we see users embedded technology into their body as a part of second factor of authentication. Whether like uh, uh, our, our microchip is going to act with on, a, on a certain heart rate or maybe based on a GPS location or maybe uh, an apt as a su suitable temperature are being detected so as to uh, gain access uh, or maybe uh, privacy features or maybe authentication features that has to be physically present. So this device has to be powered by your human body so that uh, you know the embedded technology will gain access into the human body which in turn will automate the multi-factor authentication. So you, you should not have a single uh, level authentication, you should have at least two or maybe three level authentication so as to enforce better security. And last but not the least, the hack self-driving cars which lead to drive-through ransomware. So malicious software which are uh, you know implanted in the autonomous vehicles is uh, responsible for driving the people across the country. Like uh, uh, you know, mischief, maker, uh, mischief makers, what they do is they lock the passengers in their cars and uh, you know have them driven across the country from you know, from like uh, like in US from San Francisco, Francisco to maybe New York. You know even you know being let them out. So what they are trying to do, they are locking you know, the passengers and uh, they are trying to uh, build a, a, you know the uh, locked in mechanism. So what you are going to do is drive through ransomware which requires the passenger to pay a fee to be let out of the car. So if they if the passenger pays a fee then he or she can be let out of the car. So in other more malicious part of the world this technology has been used to kidnap unsuspecting passengers who have had to pay a ransom to get out. So this has been a fashion. So hack self-driving cars definitely it will uh, lead to a drive-through ransom. So this is uh, a more important part uh, with regards to this country like uh, future plans and policy recommendations the Azerbaijani way. Actually, uh, Azerbaijan has been doing a very uh, good work with regards to cyber strength and there is a need for strong promotion of cyber security studies. You know, the establishment of cyber security center and academic uh, institution, um, you know, in and around Azerbaijan. Definitely the policies, the rules, the regulations uh, with regards to defense uh, has been uh, doing a great work thanks to the uh, initiative of the government. But uh, you know the cyber security oriented academia with the research oriented feedback definitely it will improve the uh, cyber security experts of the Azerbaijan because uh, several are pursuing their research in cyber security and it is good that we try to pursue uh, your research so that uh, uh, you become uh, more skillful uh, with regards to the cyber security laws in your own country. And there is a development of unified national cyber uh, security institution to counter the evolving uh, insecure cyberspace. Definitely there is an early warning system. Um, it should be capable enough to automatically activate the strike capabilities of Azerbaijan cyber defense because only with cyber defense you can go with the, uh, uh, an emergency plan which really works out, which really takes your country to the next level. And Bureau should be able to uh, be responsible in developing the coordination between the different state uh, departments and the uh, agencies. Too. And creation of special cyber force or maybe a team of uh, computer experts, definitely it will uh, make a great mark in the Azerbaijan cyber border an inclusive network for supervision of uh, cyber interaction. So definitely it will provide a secure cyber network. Even at the global levels, the officials need to incorporate the... Uh, doctor, you are muted. Could you please open your camera uh, open your microphone? Yes, Doctor, can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Okay. Right. So, at uh, even the global level, the officials of the uh, country need to incorporate the national security with the international cyber security uh, cooperation. 
So definitely it will make a huge mark even with a case of uh, a secure cyber network in your country or maybe in your institution, even in the research centers where you are trying to implement, definitely it will make a good policy recommendation and it will lay a future plan for the uh, Azerbaijani government. This is very, very important. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to take uh, uh, you know, uh, some 10 minutes time for this uh, slide because uh, this is a very, very useful practice that should be uh, taken over in your institution, which are the importance of uh, technical events within the institution to achieve the mission. We have like uh, uh, in our institution, you should come up with the creative programs. You should come up with techno parks and scientific expeditions you should be conducting it periodically so as to uh, foster the standards of cyber security maybe it is a spiritual practice or maybe a sports activity or maybe a, a, a information technology even in the digital era which makes a, a positive mark in the students and in your faculty development programs like uh, there should be startups or maybe even clubs like uh, the institution you have been doing with uh, several uh, reunions or maybe clubs, you should come up with several startups in your organization so that uh, uh, the students will have an attraction over it and they might uh, uh, use it an idea to develop uh, uh, this as a model or maybe a prototype in the company or industry where they are going to work with. And definitely club are, uh, are going to make a positive impact in uh, the faculty career as well as the students career even. We can go for collaboration programs. I'm talking about the third point. This is collaboration programs. May it be a local program or maybe regional program or maybe national program or maybe international program. You should go with collaboration programs uh, within the institution or between institutions or maybe with the institutions in the foreign universities or colleges. So this is where you are going to make a positive impact and definitely your institution is going to grow with regards to the level or maybe the standard. And most importantly, the MOU signing. Like uh, in your university, you might have some reputation. You might have some, uh, you know, the quality assurance even. But the thing is that your university should be uh, locally, regionally, nationally and internationally uh, accredited even. For example, National Board of Accreditation, NBA. We have like uh, Accreditation Board of Engineering and Technology, ABED. Uh, so we should go for uh, higher level, uh, you know, uh, accreditation uh, societies or maybe standards so that our university gets uh, universally accredited so as to gain admission for national and international students. After each trimester or maybe after each semester, you should ensure quality assurance is being uh, you know done periodically like uh, for example after your uh, test one or maybe test two or maybe after test three quality assurance should be assured every now and then so that uh, you meet up to the standards and there should be webinars such as these there should be faculty development programs there should be refreshment courses before the start of each semester or between the semester or maybe at the end of the semester there should be workshops or maybe the tools which you are going to use in your courses on the topics which you are going to practice. So these activities definitely it, it will make a positive impact on your research or maybe the topic of interest of the students which they uh, aspire to get placed in a dream company or organization. Also there should be like uh, conferences, uh, journals even, patents, uh, newspaper articles even. Uh, of course, everybody would have come across conferences and journals, but uh, definitely patent plays a vital role because patent is something like a product where you get, you know, a national as well as international recognition out of it. Like, uh, uh, for example, I have like eight patents to my credit, all of which have been internationally granted with patent number. So the same case, we have to collaborate and we should uh, come up with new innovative ideas, products and patents for our future growth and for the uh, upliftment of the student community. We should also publish our research articles in newspaper articles and magazine articles as even so that our university where we are working definitely uh, it will gain attraction, definitely it will make a positive impact in the society where we are living. And next I am going to get in touch with the community engagement activities. 
for example if you are experiencing ramadan then you can go with the ramadan giveaway uh, function where uh, you try to give a sponsor a lunch for your uh, faculty members or maybe students even so like uh, the students and faculty members they try to purchase uh, uh, from you and whatever the money you get you give it to the poor you give it to the needy you give it to the poor people in azerbaijan so this will definitely make a huge impact in the society or the community where you are living with so definitely in the new year functions even you can do such activities for example if you have a beach you can go for beach cleaning in the weekends definitely it will make a huge impact for example you collect the torn clothes or maybe you know used clothes even so you can give it to the uh, needy people definitely it's going to add up in the community engagement activity but i am talking about a community engagement activity that has to be enhanced to the international standards for example you go to new zealand you go to usa or maybe you go to london and go with get in touch with the community engagement activity for over a month and you know definitely it will uh, you know broaden our minds in the uh, university where we are working with. and next one is the benchmarking uh, curriculum enhancement through local regional national and international benchmarking of course our students are industry specific or maybe our students are uh, you know dreaming about their jobs uh, you know in the future market of the uh, government uh, for example the industry is more specific with regards to one particular research area or one particular topic our university should be capable enough to provide uh, the subjects in our curriculum so we should match with the local regional national and international benchmarking with the national and international universities and we should frame the syllabus and curriculum in such a way it meets the industry specific needs and regulations and there should be program industry advisory panel even to constantly evaluate our uh, curriculum as well as the syllabus procedures the last but not the least we have the open ended projects and research grants like uh, what i would suggest is after each trimester or maybe after each semester a student is expected to do a simple uh, project out of it so we are going to uh, give a uh, out of box uh, project after the completion of the uh, you know before the completion of the exams we are going to give an open ended project so the student is going to make a prototype or model out of it and uh, definitely it will uh, kindle the minds to uh, uh, take part uh, in a national level competition or maybe an international level ieee robotics competition even definitely it will uh, make them uh, think in a more practical point of view also with the faculty members we, we can concentrate on the research grants we can uh, go with the you know the national level and international level collaborations for getting research grants from the funding agencies if we are getting patents more and more national and international patents more research papers in the relevant field more conference articles definitely the chances of getting research grants for our institution is much much higher so i hope you enjoyed the video with regards to the future of cyber security definitely it will make a, a huge mark and definitely there 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 are going to be like uh, millions of jobs in the cyber security so go forward like uh, uh, before somebody else makes a mark it is you who has to initiate to make a cyber career a successful one so for this case uh, you know i i want to make sure that i suggest that you build your own website soon because uh, only if you are, if you have a own website or maybe have good patents or maybe uh, good research publications you can you know uh, commercially master the technical researches you can collaborate with the researchers definitely you can gather research grants in the information security field where you are interested so i have mine uh, it is www.tristan.com so i would suggest that you build your websites and uh, this is my small suggestion to everybody don't expect others to do all the work say to yourself i have to initiate i am responsible for all my duties and responsibilities and i am the sole one and i have to give promotion wherever it is needed so tell to yourself you know i am responsible
and this is uh, one of the most uh, famous image, a popular image. Normally, uh, I would get this in mind whenever I am in trouble. Never ever give up at, at any point in your life. Even if a crane uh, catches you, you know, catch hold of the neck so that uh, the crane cannot swallow you. And uh, thank you for your patience. Let's start working uh, from this time onwards. And I thank uh, the management for giving me a very useful opportunity, a very wonderful opportunity to explain the importance of information security, cyber security in the digital era. Thank you, Rana. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Anand, for a very interesting and comprehensive uh, presentation. And I believe it was uh, interesting for all of our faculty members and students.